Hi, Ed Diaz here. In today's video, we're going to learn how to program Apple Logic to change scenes inside our Roland Phantom. All right, let's get started. So having Apple Logic change the Phantom scenes can be very helpful, especially in a live situation to where you're changing a lot of sounds or overall scenes and you don't have time to touch the keyboard. You're just focused on playing. Uh, this could come in handy if you're playing like a stage show, maybe a play or maybe a Christmas pageant or a special church thing. So it can be a very helpful thing to do. And let's go ahead and get started and learn how to do it now. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Roland website. I'm going to go to products real fast and I'm going to go synthesizers and we're going to look up a phantom real fast. So I'm going to go to the performance workstation and we're going to go to a phantom. It doesn't matter which one because what we need is the MIDI implementation numbers for the different scenes. All right, so I'm going to cursor all the way to the bottom, and these will be the same whether it's a Phantom 61, 76, or 88. So I'm going to go to support, and we're going to go to sound list. All right, so I'm going to choose that right here. I'm going to agree, and I'm going to download the file. Just, you know, pop it open so I can take a look. All right, so here we have the sound list. Now notice that if we zoom in, you can see that we have these numbers here, MSB, LSB, and program change numbers. This is the address of the scenes in the Phantom. This is pretty cool. So this is what we're going to need to program uh, within Logic and change scenes. All right. And so, and let's take a look, quick look at this. You're going to see that we have all the different uh, banks in there. So all good. And then D kind of follows suit. They kind of in there. But then in the next video, we'll show actually how to do the same thing with individual tones. All right. But first, let's learn how to do it with scenes. So all 16 zones will change simultaneously. All right. So now that I know that I have that document there, let's go ahead and move on to Logic and get it set up as well. All right. So here's Logic. Input, output device, same as we want to do. So let's choose that. All right, and this one, we're going to use an external MIDI. So we're going to have this one set here, external MIDI. And we'll use the external MIDI plugin. And we're going to use MIDI destination. It's going to be the Phantom and MIDI channel 16. And I'll show you why in just one second. And we're just going to do one track. So this one is going to be MIDI channel 16. And I turned on this so we can take a look. Uh, there it is right here. And it's going to be... 16 into the phantom so this is what's going to be happening so i'm going to go ahead and just name this you know phantom scenes uh, just for me just so we know right there and i might go ahead and change the icon change the icon very quickly let me close this guy out of the way change that icon just so i know into some kind of keyboard in here or maybe we'll just uh, have it a little bit of a the drum machine or something, something that's Roland-esque. So we'll just, let's just put a TR-808. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now that I have that, let me show you why I chose MIDI channel 16. If we go into menu here, we're going to go into system, and we're going to use the system settings, and we're going to go down into MIDI. Now, inside the MIDI, we have Scene Control Channel, and it's set to MIDI Channel 16. So this is the channel that the Phantom will correspond to when we're changing scenes externally. Uh, and that could be from another keyboard or from a software such as Logic or Ableton. All right, so I think I'm pretty much set there. So I'm just making sure that the Phantom is set to 16. You don't have to even really do anything. So let's go ahead and exit, and we're set here. We'll just leave the Phantom right on the top. Uh, scene select screen. That's all we need. Now, inside Logic, we need to create some uh, some dummy MIDI clip. So I might come into here and say create MIDI region. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select right here. And this is the list editors. And I'm going to go ahead and start uh, putting in the numbers. Okay, so we're going to go into here. I'm going to make sure I select controller. And I'm going to go ahead and say, let's add, add. And then I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, let's select a program change. Okay, and we're going to add it. And I'm gonna, now I need to adjust the positions of them. So I'm going to have this one actually at 113. And you'll see what, what makes sense. So we'll go ahead and put this 
right there. So it ends up, and I might have this one at 112. All right, just, just like this. And let's see if I can open this a little bit better so you can see a little bit more. I'm not sure if I can. All right. So let's take a pop it open just so you can see. Okay. So 112. There we go. All right. So I have it set there. And now I need to make sure they're all set to MIDI channel 16 because this is where they're going to go. Okay, this is what they're triggering, MIDI channel 16. And this first one is probably the hardest one, but after you do this, it makes so much sense. Now I'm going to go ahead and say uh, I want it to be MSB, and then I'm going to set this one for LSB, not LSD. So set it for LSB, and then this one is already set at program change. All right, so this is the basic architecture of doing this. Okay, so once we do this, uh, this is we're almost home free. All right, so now we're going to adjust the values. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and take a look back at uh, the numbers over here, and let's choose number twelve. So eighty-five zero twelve. Now let me explain very quickly what MSB, LSB, and program change are in the most simple way that I know how a, a, a dear friend taught me this years ago, and it just stuck. So think of MSB, the, the um, most significant bit, as a subdivision, a neighborhood. Okay, so this is uh, MSB is this particular neighborhood. LSB, or least significant bit, is the street that the house is on. That's the street, okay? And then the program change number is the actual numbered address, all right? So LSB is the neighborhood, LSB is the street, and program change is the house number. So it's very easy in here. So we're gonna we're gonna do, I think, 85, 0, and 12. Remember those numbers? And now let's go ahead and program them in there. So MSB was that first one. The value is gonna be 85. The number was zero, and this one's 12. Okay, so that's what we programmed for right here. Now let's see what the Phantom does real quick. We changed it, started. Let's back it up again. Let's put the Phantom someplace else. Let's press play. And notice it changed uh, to 13. Let's check our numbers real quick again. So let me just click on it. And 85, 0. Ah, so it looks like we're off by 1 off by one here. And that just might be how the particular MIDI numbers are inside Logic. So we, so on Logic, it looks like we're gonna be, have to be off by one in here. So here's what we can do. We can try it again. I'm gonna copy and paste this guy in a couple different places. And now that we have the basic formula, MSB, LSB, and program change numbers, now all we have to do is put the different values. So we'll leave this one here. And let's go ahead and, and see what we have here. So remember that program change number, it'll be plus one. So if we wanted, if we actually wanted 12, we would put uh, 11. So 11 right in there. Uh, let's see here. And then now this one, let's go ahead and put it at something else. Let's go ahead and try it at, uh, let's see, 28. And that should put us at uh, 29, I believe. And then we'll go ahead and put the phantom back at five. So we'll change this one because we're using this. We use this one as a template. All right. And five. And then let's go ahead and change a bank. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So there's bank A, all of those. Let's go to bank B. So the numbers, let's do this one. Um, Snow Suite, so 85, 1, 21. So in order for Logic to recognize it, it looks like it would have to be 85, 1, 20. All right, so let's go into the Logic at 85, 1, because that would be the B section. So we'll double click so we can go in there and edit. And that would be 20. And let's go do another one. Let's go ahead and check the C section right here. So, oh, there we go. Let's go to the poly key. So 85 to 4. So it would be 85 to 3. And, you know, I could be wrong. We might be able to adjust our MIDI numbers in Logic, but I might have to do that uh, later. So let's see. 
85, 2, and 3. Great. And let's do one more and put it back. 85. Oh, let's go to the other bank. So I'm assuming that the D section, if we take a pick, quick look. Here, just kind of lets you know Ds are start on number 3. So let's go 85, 3, 70, 70, 85, 3, 70 for this one. 85, 3, and 70. So remember, these have no sound. All that these messages are doing are changing the scenes in the Phantom. So let's back it up. Let's take a look at my Phantom as these are playing back, and let's see what happens. Notice that we have all of these uh, set so we can see, and uh, let's see what we have. Everything appears to be good. And uh, we're all set to go. All right, let's let's give it a shot. See what happens. Watch the Phantom. Watch my logic, and let's go. There we go. Boom. There we go. Yeah, there we go. It's looking good. B section now should go to the C section. Boom. Right there where we wanted. And I think the D section here, which would be 71. Awesome. And then if we wanted to, if we wanted to go back to a scene, remember, we could always copy and paste. It could be a very fun way to just kind of move around uh, different scenes. So remember, once you have these how you want, you could take these MIDI clips and you can adjust them by color and even name them. So if we wanted to, I could go ahead and have different colors. Uh, for the different clips so I know what bank is coming up or whatever's going on. It could be a whole lot of fun uh, to go in here. And w once again, this could be something that you could use if you're playing along with tracks or backing tracks and you want the Phantom to change with you in a live situation, this is how you would do it. So once again, all I did, and I'll, I'll do another one in just one second, is I just went ahead and just having it all changed. So let's do it one more time. I'll do a brand new one here. I'm going to right click, create MIDI region. Okay. And I opened up this list panel right here. And I went ahead and we'll do it in order. I want to go ahead and do a controller. So let's add two of them. And then I want to do a program change. All right. And let's add one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave this one at one, you know, 19, one, 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 one. So I hit that first click and this one I'll go ahead and have, oh, that's the program. Got to be careful. Let me take your time. So that's the program change. I'm going to change that number to three because I need these to go in sequential order. Okay. They got to go in a uh, particular order. I'll leave that first one alone at one, double click, and I'll put this one at two. Great. So they're almost there. And then now we'll go ahead and set this one, uh, the MIDI channels. And remember, the Phantom response to MIDI channel 16. So 16 is how we change the scenes. Great. So we're almost there. And now we'll go ahead and do MSB, which is the neighborhood that the scene lives in. LSB, which is right there, 32. That is the street. And then we have the program change number, which is... Uh, the actual house number of that sound. So now let's go ahead and pick one. Let's go back and take a look. And let's just choose here. Let's choose this one right here. Uh, let's use Cat Dance in honor of my gatos. So it's 85068. So we got to back up one. So 85067. That's just how logic is. And I might be able to adjust that. Let me. I'll take a look in a second and see if I can find that for you. So 85068. So in the value, 85068. All right, I think we are good to go. So that is that one. And let's let's go ahead and give it a shot here. And I'll put this one here. And then we can go ahead and change the color of it. Right click right on it. 
and then we can go ahead and name and color. So if you if you wanted to, you could actually name the scenes if you wanted to. I'll go ahead and show hide colors, and we'll do this uh, like a roll in orange, and let's give it one more look. So watch my phantom as this plays down, and here we go. I'm just I'll just even go random. I'll just go random into any section, and let's press play and see what happens. So there we go, right into the banks, exactly where we told them to go. And this is so cool. This is such a, a cool thing that we can do and just be switching sounds automatically for you as you're playing tracks. Okay, so once again, this can be a great, great feature to take advantage of, uh, especially as the holidays come or if you're doing any kind of Broadway musical, musical type of shows or church functions, you know, like a church pageant or uh, whatever, where you have to be very precise in what's going on with the backing tracks and you want to use the doll to change those scenes for you. This is exactly how you would do it. MSB, LSB, and program change number, it is a game changer and it's 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 amazing. So in this example, we just use logic to do the scenes, but in the next example, we can actually have it change specific patches inside your Phantom. All right, I hope this helps you out. You guys take care and we'll talk to you later.